What is up, everybody? Chris, the old ass retro gamer here, back for another video game collection live stream. Today, I'm going to be talking about a good mix of things. I've got my PC Engine, TurboGrafx 16, which also includes PC Engine CD and TurboGrafx CD, as well as the Atari Lynx and the Tiger Gamecom. But anyway, so welcome everybody who has shown up already. Welcome, welcome. Um, why am I doing these live streams? I've talked about it pretty much in every one of them. And the reason I'm doing it is it's to catalog what I have. So I have a record in case something bad happens like a fire or, you know, something, you know, something happens. <laughs> I can say this is what I have. There's proof. It's on the webs. Everything on the webs is the truth. This is what I got. What's up, Chicago Force? How's it going? Good to see you. <clears throat> so, like I said, I'm going to be talking about the... Starting off with the PC Engine. Also PC Engine CD, TurboGrafx-16, Turbo CD, and Atari Lynx, and the GameCom. Um, so, I do have a... I, I never had a TurboGrafx back in the day. I always wanted one. I always thought that... Uh, I saw like an ad for... I think it was uh, Legendary Axe. What is up, Krillin? How's it going, dude? Um, I, always, I thought Golden Axe looked really cool. Or not Golden Axe. Psst, Legendary Axe. Wrong console. Um, I always thought that looked cool. Parents never wanted to buy us another console. At that point, we have just... I think we had just gotten our NES. And my parents were like, that's it. You're done. Um, so, never got one. I did buy one on my own. In, I think 2001 and back then no one was collecting it no one gave a crap about it I got a console for I think 40 bucks off of eBay when eBay was kind of like a new thing I was getting games for like five dollars each uh, and it, the ones that are expensive now I was getting for like five bucks each back then nobody gave a crap about this console but eventually I had to sell everything when I lost my job in 2011 so everything had to go to, you know, pay the bills and make sure I had food in my belly and a roof over my head. Um, but when I got back into collecting again in 2013, one of the first things I said to myself was TurboGrafx-16. I loved it. When I had it in the early 2000s, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was great. Um, never, well, when I got back into collecting, I took a look at everything on eBay and I was like, wow, what the hell happened here? Everything is super expensive, including the console. The TurboGrafx CD attachment was, like, obscenely expensive. Um, if I wanted to get a Turbo Duo, which was the combination of the TurboGrafx and the CD in one unit and not the ones that attach to each other, that was super expensive. And I heard that they were prone to crashing all the time. Uh, they had bad capacitors and all this kind of stuff, so they were kind of unreliable. Um, you can get them modded. It was going to cost even more to do that on top of the console itself. So I kind of said, I'll wait. And then I, I think it was like in 2014 or 2015 is when I, I decided to pull the trigger. I went on eBay, found a guy in Japan who was selling a Japanese Turbo Duo that had been modded to allow it to play American games. And it was, it, it was expensive, but it was not nearly as expensive as the American Turbo Duos. So I said, you know, F it, do it. I bought it. It was like, I, I think I'd just gotten my uh, tax return. I was just like, that was the time to get something that you normally can't afford. You know, you have some extra money in your in your pocket, you know, do it. I did it and I have not turned back. I absolutely love the Turbo Duo. I have never played any of the CD games before owning a Turbo Duo. So that was new to me. And uh, now actually collecting the games themselves are kind of a problem because they are usually really expensive and hard to come by. Now that I don't have a dedicated retro store near me, uh, like People Play Games that was in Chicago to find these games at, which is when like I first got the Turbo Duo, I was going there. I went there like three weeks in a row, like on a Monday. I would go there every Monday and raid their TurboGrafx section, which was great. Uh, but like I said, they're hard to find. If I ever want to get them, I either accidentally come across them at a half price books of all places, which makes no sense to me at all. Or I have to get them off of eBay or Amazon or whatever. Or Facebook groups. I've gotten a couple of these off Facebook groups. Um, so, let's get into it. 
all the TurboGrafx-16 stuff I have, I got lucky to get my uncle's collection and a trace. Mine is a couple of games I bought myself. Yeah, um, I've gotten lucky on a lot of these. Uh, one of my missions at this this upcoming, you know, the 2020 Midwest Gaming Classic is to really buff up my TurboGrafx collection and PC Engine collection. I got a couple games there this year, and I'll show those off when I get there. But let's start off with the PC Engine and PC Engine CD. And here's the big one that I got at the Midwest Gaming Classic this year. Uh, the day of the uh, the first day of the convention, Saturday, you know, the doors open for the dealers hall. Me, Jason from Corpse Flood Gaming, and uh, Church the Game Grinder walk in the front door. First table I walk up to. Jason points out that there was one of the NES games that I was looking for in the video that I made about what I was looking for at the convention, right in my face. And this was in the expensive games case that was on the table you know so people can't actually handle it and walk away with it because this was a pretty penny and i said you know what this is the kind of shit you were saving all this money up for when you you know to come to this convention to, to be able to do uh you save up all this money so you can buy really expensive things that you normally can't afford and i did that right off the bat when i bought let's hang on a second let me let me get the phone out so i can pronounce it correctly give me one second uh so yeah the first thing i bought there was Akumajo Dracula X Chino Rondo, or Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Um, this is an exclusive, well, at the time it was an exclusive for the PC Engine uh, CD. It's uh, the only Castlevania game on the, the uh, PC Engine. This was developed specifically for the console. It was eventually ported over to the Super Nintendo as Castlevania Dracula X. and was gimped. Uh, they changed it and, you know, dumbed it down. Uh i've been wanting this game forever because i love castlevania and to find it there yeah it was super expensive but like i said i've been saving all this money for a reason and that's why i got it uh and it is fantastic when i got home from the convention i was capturing footage for every game that i bought and i ended up capturing well i was capturing the footage for this i ended up playing it for almost an hour <laughs> got pretty far in it and i did have Ca uh, dracula x for the super nintendo back in the day back in the late 90s when i was collecting and uh i thought it was okay but damn this game is absolutely fantastic the graphics the music the gameplay it has a story it has voice acting that is japanese and german what makes no sense <laughs> i think it's kind of funny though to hear like some character talking in german and these being responded to in uh in japanese uh, but it's a fantastic Castlevania game. I absolutely love it. If you want to be able to play this the cheapest way possible, there's the Castlevania, what's it called? The Castlevania Chronicles on the PSP. There's a version of this on that collection that is really good, uh, but this is the best way to play it. And here's a licensed game for the PC Engine. This was one of the first games I bought for it when I got the Turbo Duo. Because I had a an emulator on my phone for the Turbo Graphics and the PC Engine, and I was downloading all these Japanese games to play, and I played this one thinking it was going to be a port of the Genesis game, and it turned out to be its own thing, and I was really surprised because of the genre of the game, uh, based on the license of Batman. Um, it's a Pac-Man style puzzle game. Um, yeah, I just said it was on the PSP, yeah, it's great. I have that too, also. Um, yeah, this is like playing Pac-Man, not with dots or anything like that, but basically it's like you have a maze, you need, Batman is walking through said maze, and there are enemies around, you have batarangs that you can use to, uh, stun them, and once you stun them, you can touch them, and they will go away, they will, you'll kill them. And... Uh, there are power-ups that you can pick up that let you move faster, that lets your batarangs travel further um and there's just regular things for points and you have like tasks to do on the levels as well like when you get to the museum the art museum levels you have to um undeface the paintings that the joker has spray painted over and stuff like that it's sounds weird it's actually really really good i love this one i i thought it was so fun to play on my phone that when i got the turbo duo i said i kind of want a physical version of it and I think I found the only one that was on eBay at the time that actually had the case and not just the, the random, you know, card. And that's the other thing about the TurboGrafx-16, for those of you not in the know, I'm sure all of you are, but, you know, just in case there's one or two of you, TurboGrafx games come on these little credit card things. <laughs> and it's fascinating that there is a game with great music, 
and graphics and play control and all that on a, this dinky little thing. Still shocks the hell out of me, but whatever. Batman is awesome. It even has the music from the first stage of the NES Batman game in here, too. And it's, like, amped up, which makes it even better. I love it. Okay, so here is a twofer. What's up, Stubby? Finally get to watch one of these live. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> Glad that you're here. Okay, so I picked this one up called Burai. I picked this one up at People Play Games, which was the retro game store near me. Uh, it's completely in Japanese. It is an RPG. I can't tell you what the hell's going on in this game. I don't, I don't speak Japanese at all. Uh, but I was just kind of like, oh, cool. You know, like, and I'm pretty sure I can find a walkthrough or some sort of like a play-by-play -play of the game, uh, you know, tell you what's being told to you. So I could actually maybe play it a little bit. I didn't, <laughs> but that didn't stop me from when I went to California to visit my brother in LA when he took me to that store Game Dude where I found Barai 2, and I think this has a subtitle. Yeah, Barai 2, Yami Kute no... Oh, Jesus. Gayakushu. I'm probably butchering. I am. Let's be honest, I am butchering everything. Uh, so when I saw this sitting there, I was like, is that what I think it is? Yeah, it turned out to be Barai 2. And I was like, give it to me. I probably still will not be able to play it. And I can't. But whatever. It's just cool to have that I have, like, some... Uh, some Japanese exclusives and that's the thing is there are way more games released for this thing in Japan than there were in the U.S. I mean like we're talking probably by a ratio of like eight to one and like I remember the first year that I went to the Midwest Gaming Classic they had a room dedicated to the Turbo Graphics, and I there were like boxes and boxes of Turbo of uh, PC Engine games to flip through and I did not even know where to start. I was like, I don't know what any of these... I think I saw a Ranma game in there somewhere, but I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. So I just walked out because I was like completely over, overstimulated. I didn't even know what to look at. So I didn't know what any of the games were. So I didn't even have the Turbo Graphics at that point in time anyway, so it didn't make any difference. But let's move on to the next game. This one's called Gamola Speed. Um, I bought this because GameSack talked about it in one of their videos. And it's kind of like... It's hard to explain. If you remember that there was like those old games called Snake, where it's like you have a dot on the screen and you have like this like snake that you have to make touch the dot, and once he touches the dot, it gets a little bit longer. It's kind of like that, but even more complicated. Um, I played it like when I first got it, and I just to see if it worked, and I li it did, and I liked it, but I haven't played it at any great length, so I honestly cannot go over um, like details of it because it's honestly I don't remember, but. I liked what I saw in their video so much that it made me want to buy it. So that's saying something. Also, because of all the games they're talking about in that video about PC Engine games, it was the cheapest one on eBay. It could, that could be a thing. Okay, so this one I'm not happy about. Hang on a second. We got to look it up. La, la, la. Okay, so this one is called Genpei Tumaden. And what it is is a sequel to a game that got ported over to the TurboGrafx-16 called samurai ghost or ghost samurai one or the other and when i saw this at the midwest gaming classic like three years ago or whatever it was i said hey you know probably never gonna be able to afford that ghost samurai or samurai ghost whatever the hell it was called but you know this i got for like seven bucks so i was like i'll play the sequel and when i brought it home i was like wow this is one of the worst pieces of crap i have ever played the animation is so choppy it's it feels like it's an unfinished platformer slash beat em up and I was not happy. So there's the possibility that I might be getting rid of this in the future. I don't know. Uh, but we shall see. But I was not happy about that one. Here we have Gradius. There is a port of Gradius to the TurboGrafx-16. Well, sorry. I keep on calling it TurboGrafx. This is still PC Engine. Uh, yeah, in Japan, they got all these ports of like these Konami games that came out on the NES and everything else. And arcade games and whatnot. And you know what? I wasn't a big fan of Gradius on the NES because of all the slowdown. There is absolutely zero slowdown in this. Plus, the graphics are just a little bit better. The sound is a little bit better. The music is a little bit better. It plays a little bit better. Uh, so, I'm going to say this is a good way to go if you want to play, like, a definitive version of Gradius. And then there's always Gradius 2. And this has a subtitle called Gopher No Yabao. I have no idea what that means. Um, but this one is on CD what so it has cd quality music which is pretty awesome but it's more of the same it's just another 
vertically scrolling shmup, or sorry, horizontally scrolling shmup. And it's a really good one at that. We never got a port of this for the NES. I think they did in Japan, but we didn't for whatever reason. But I love it. I think it's great. Next up is Marshall Champion. I picked this up at People Play Games right before they closed. That's another CD game. And what this is is a really early one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It, I think this predates uh, Street Fighter. And it's okay. The characters are kind of small and they all kind of play the same. It's all right. It's very clunky and slow. But like I said, it's an early one-on-one -on -one fighting game. This one I definitely need to look up what the hell the name is. Oh, Jesus. Where are you? Come on. Don't hide. Okay. You ready for this? Because this is this sucks. Sadakichi 7 Hideyoshi no Ogon. Um, it's a like Legend of Zelda style adventure game. And I found this at People Play Games also. And I think I got this for a whopping four bucks. Four or five dollars, I think. And I asked the guy at the counter who was like my little buddy that, uh, you know, I always chit chatted with him whenever I was there, you know, if it was worth having. And he said that people would like play this, sell it back when they were done. And then like immediately someone else would buy it, play it, bring it back and set, resell it back to them. It was like, it was constantly in and out of the store. But every time pr the person did that, they said, yeah, like, yeah, I beat it. It was great. But you know, I want another game now. And you know, they're not collectors like me, obviously, if they were doing shit like that, because I would never do anything like that, guys. It, it, I buy it, it stays here. Like you see, I got a couple of games in here I don't like. Um, but it's okay. Another game I can't really understand what's going on uh, because of language. Here we have Parodius Da Shinwa Kara Owarihe. Mm -hmm. uh, Parodius is a parody of all the Konami shooters that Konami made to make fun of themselves. At least they have a sense of humor. Um, and it's like a, a, a cute em up I guess is the term for it. Uh, this one also is... Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought this was a CD. Oh, I guess not. But this one has one of those weird-ass... ways to hold the card in here. It's like these little clips on the side. It's bizarre. Falls out anyway, but it's another uh, horizontally scrolling shmup, but it's like really adorable. Like um, the first boss is a pirate ship that has a cat head attached to it. And there's like a, a boss who's a freaking showgirl who wants you to shoot her in the chotch. Uh, <laughs> it's it's bizarre. Like you can play as a penguin and uh, uh, the character that you play as in the Gradius games, uh, Vic Viper. And there's like, I think there's like five or six characters you can play as in, you know, to uh, control. And it's really bizarre, but I actually really like it because it is a lot of fun. Proteus, yeah, I need to find more of these. I know there's more than one. Such a trip. First time I saw a hue card. I know, right? I First time I ever saw one of these hue cards, I was just like, what? How does that even work? I think, actually, I think I saw the cards that they had for the, the uh, Sega Master System before I ever saw a Hue card for the Turbo Graphics, And that tripped me the hell out. I was just like, how is that a thing? What? Like, why is my Nintendo game that goddamn big and this little thing is on this card? Well, those games usually weren't very complicated. That's why. <laughs> it was like all the simple games were on a card. So we have a port of the arcade version of Ninja Warriors. This just got a re-release, like a, a remaster or whatever it is of the uh, Super Nintendo game, I think. I got it for the PlayStation 4. Um, but yeah, this is the original arcade game and it's really slow and not that fun. It's really uh, a really clunky beat em up where you play as a ninja. I think there's like two ninjas you can choose from. There's a guy and a girl. Yeah, I think, yeah, you can play as the guy on the front or the uh, lady in the red. And she's still in the, the uh, one for the Super Nintendo and the PlayStation 4 that I have. Um, it's okay. The arcade down the street, there's a barcade not too far from me. That actually has the arcade version of this. And that actually has two screens built into it. Like two screens back to like side to side. So like your play field is like this big widescreen thing. It's really cool. New Zealand Story, which is an arcade game also where you play as a little Kiwi. Um, and it's like a platformer. It's okay. I remember reading about it a lot. And that's why when I saw it on eBay, I was like, oh, I should probably get that. I've always wanted to try it because I remember seeing people playing it on the... Um, what was it called? Oh God, that microcomputer from Britain. Um, not the not the Amstrad, the uh, the Spectrum, ZX Spectrum. 
And I was like, that looked kind of cool. And it's all right. It's just like an average like platformer. Uh, but since I got those Gradius games, uh, you can't forget Salamander over here was called Life Force. And man, when this showed up, I played through it. And I was like, what have I done with my life? Uh, Life Force is probably my favorite shmup on the NES. And when I played this, I was like, that game is super inferior to this. This is the, like, d not definitive, but this is, like, the best version that I owned in my collection at the time. There was an actual better version I also own. Um, but this is absolutely fantastic. It's, like, no slowdown, great music, the graphics have been improved, everything is better. I absolutely love it, because this is actually closer to the arcade version. And this is awesome. So I did have this back in the day when I was collecting for my Turbo Graphics in the early 2000s. Then I found out that it was censored over here. And I said, yeah, if I ever get back into collecting again, if I do buy this game again, you are not buying the American version. You're buying the PC Engine version because that one is uncut. And that's Splatterhouse. Um, in Japan, uh, the mask is white. The, uh, the hockey mask that your character wears is white. It had to be made purple over here. For licensing because of Friday the 13th. Uh, it was a trademark thing, so they had to change it. And there's like religious things, and there's some gore issues. Like the one of the bosses you fight are a bunch of like severed heads that are floating around an upside down cross. And that was considered a no no over here. So it was cut out, uh, but it is fully here. So what the game actually is, is a it's a side scrolling beat em up where he plays this guy who puts on like a possessed hockey mask. Uh, and it makes him into this, like, Jason Voorhees-style killing machine. His girlfriend gets kidnapped and brought to this haunted house, and you have to, like, kill everything in the house to get to her. One of the most effed-up endings to a game ever. <laughs> it's great. It's an awesome game. And this is the one that completely freaked me the hell out when I found out this was a thing. It was so cool that I ended up buying a special controller just to play it. And that is Street Fighter II Champion Edition. I had no idea that Street Fighter 2 was on the TurboGrafx-16, and I kept on saying to myself, how is that even possible? The controller has two buttons on it. Two buttons. How is that going to work? It honestly doesn't, because when I first got this game, I played it with my original controller, and yeah, it's not fun, because you basically just have like a one punch and one kick, and that's it. There's no variation. It is absolutely nuts. And the game is so big, like it takes up so much memory... That the cartridge, the little card, had to be changed. And now you see that it's got... I where I can place it. Uh, it's got like a bump on the top of it. See right here? Because that's where all the extra memory is. <laughs> it's so strange. But it is a really, really good version of the game. I mean, I cannot complain. It is really fun. And I liked it so much that I went out and bought the Avenue Pad 6 for the, for the uh, PC Engine. Because it has the six buttons. And every one of them has turbo. That's fantastic. I am so thrilled that I found this. And now all of a sudden these things are being bought up like crazy. Because now everybody wants one. I was like, I, I hopped on the train just before everybody left on it. I, I'm a trendsetter, I guess. I don't think so. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, like it seemed like the moment I bought this, all of a sudden everybody was buying one. I don't know why. But I got it pretty cheap, so I'm not complaining. But Street Fighter 2, holy shit. What's up, Completionist? How's it going? What's up, fuck Google? Yeah, them Japanese game names. Hit the, yeah, hit the like, people, please. <laughs> uh, I have the US one because it's part of my uncle's... Yeah, it's it's heavily censored. That's the reason why I didn't want to buy uh, Splatterhouse on the, uh, in the American region. Yeah, Street Fighter 2 on the PC Engine is witchcraft. I do not understand how that works. How is that a thing? I want to control a man out of beer, and when you start playing, you crack open and drink while you play. I'm pretty sure someone has done something like that at some point. I'm pretty sure there's got to be a flask out there, a flask controller. That'd be awesome. And the last game I have for the PC Engine is Super Darius, which is another uh, horizontally scrolling shmup. And this one is a CD one at that. And this is one of those games, where well, this franchise is where you fight Robofish. Everything in this is a fish. Robot fish. Why? Is this a fetish thing? I don't know. Is this something? This is obviously something really Japanese. But it's a fantastic shmup. There's, there's so many games in this series, too. It's great. And I had to have one for the, for the uh, PC Engine. I just had to have it. Okay. So now let's move on to Turbo Graphics 16. So I got Turbo Graphics 16 Hue Card games and CD games in here. 
Starting with a licensed game, we got The Addams Family. Um, I wanted to know if this was based on the ones that were made by Ocean that came out for like the NES and the Super Nintendo and the Genesis and all that. Turns out, no. Um, Hudson made this one on their own. And it's different. It's, a, it's still a side-scrolling platformer. It's on CD. So there's like little clips from the movie into it and all that. But it's, it's not that fun. Um, I was actually kind of disappointed. I picked this one up at People Play Games. It was like the first time that I went there. Remember I said I went to People Play Games when I got my uh, Turbo Duo. I went there three Mondays in a row and just kept on raiding their Turbo Graphics se uh, section. This is the one I bought there the first, um, the first time I went. And the guy even looked at me at the counter and he goes, "You know, this has this is the Turbo CD version of the game. This isn't a this isn't a Hue card." And I said, "Yeah, I, I'm aware." He goes. How do you have the Turbo Graphics CD? And I go, no, I have a Turbo Duo. And he went, oh, well, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, well, then don't fucking qual you know challenge me. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Next we have Alien Crush, which is a pinball game. There's another one called Devil Crush, and that one is all about Satanish type things. This one's all about obviously aliens. Um, it's a pretty decent game. I enjoy it. I enjoy video pinball. Here's a classic. We got uh, Blazing Lasers, which is a shmup, a horizontally, or no, a vertically scrolling shmup. I keep getting them mixed up. God damn. Um, this is probably one of my favorite shmups of all time now. I kept on, I never had this one back when I was collecting originally in the early 2000s. So when I got back into collecting and I was watching all the YouTubers that made me want to get back into collecting, like Michael B. the Game Genie and metal jesus and pete door and all that all of them kept talking about blazing lasers being like this epic awesome thing and i was like well i'll try it and when i finally got a copy of it which i did get off of uh i got this off of facebook of a facebook group for turbo graphics lovers and yeah it is fantastic it is there's really no bells and whistles just very very well made <clears throat> this is probably one of my favorite games i never knew about for the turbo graphics and that's bloody wolf um, for some reason, I thought this was kind of like Contra. And it is a little bit, but it is like in a three-quarters view. It's kind of like angled. And it's more like playing a Rambo game where like you start off and you're like in a POW camp. And you go in and out of these huts and there's like refugees in there. And you can get upgrades and weapons. At one point, you can ride a motorcycle and just run people over. It's fantastic. And you get there's guns and knives. and oh, It is so good. It is so good. Um... I remember I was telling Captain Algebra about this, and he absolutely had to have it. I don't think he's actually got a copy of it yet, but Bloody Wolf is amazing. We got Bonk's Adventure and Bonk's Revenge. I will probably never get a copy of the third game in the series because that's one of those super ultra expensive ones. Bonk's Adventure is like Hudson's answer to Mario. And I always tell everybody when I, they ask me to describe uh, Bonk to them, I say, you know how in Mario games you always jump up, to pu jump up to punch a block to get something? They're like, yeah, this one's all about going down. Like, you jump up and you fall down on things. And that's the whole gist of it. You play as a caveman and uh, you find, like, meat on sticks, you know, uh, like dinosaur meat and stuff like that. And every time you eat something, you get more hyper. And then eventually you'll just become, like, super rage- bonk and you're like invincible for a little while it's kind of funny it's weird it's quirky the second one's more of the same but these are fantastic games classic bishop game controller <laughs> make your own do it be a trendsetter dude start selling that shit gotta get a uh etsy shop uh bought this one because of happy console gamer he was talking about how much he loves this i think he has the arcade cabinet of this too it's called kadash um, it, it's an arcade game. I think this also came out on the Genesis, but the Turbo Graphics version is the best one from what I understand. And it's kind of like a, I don't know, I don't want to say like a bit, it's, it's almost like a beat em up with RPG elements. It's like, um, those Dungeons and Dragons games that came out in the arcade, except not, uh, 3D, not 3D, but like, you know, the three quarter view. This one is just a side scroller one. It is actually really, really fun, but man, is it hard. And it was kind of a pricey one, too. I really liked it. I bought this one for reasons. And, um, yeah, that's China Warrior. Uh, it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up, sort of. Uh, but the thing about this is the sprites are absolutely huge. They cover half the screen. Therefore, you don't have a whole lot of time to react when things come at you. So, like, there's times where you're, like, fighting birds 
that are like coming at you and you got to like punch up or kick down or whatever to, you know, progress and some other bottles coming at you and stuff like that. And you don't have a whole lot of time to react, but it's it's not a great game, but it's cool just because the sprites are so big. Uh picked this up at People Play Games back in the, when I first got the Turbo Duo. Didn't really know anything about it, but it wasn't very expensive, which is why I bought it. Uh it's called Cosmic Fantasy 2. Uh it's an RPG, a sci-fi RPG. Uh, and when I played it a little bit just to make sure the disc worked, but the thing was that that store, they made sure everything that they had. This thing looks like nobody ever touched it. It is super clean. And I bought this like in 2015. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Fantasy Star, which isn't a bad thing. I love Fantasy Star. So yeah, this game is absolutely fantastic. China Warrior Turbo Graphics 16 Volta B is not as good as the Defenders say. Yeah, uh, I like I have it because I say like look at look what the Turbo Graphics can do. These characters are freaking huge. Nintendo didn't do that. Genesis didn't do that. Super Nintendo didn't do that. But the Turbo Graphics of all freaking things did. Go figure. This one I bought because it was cheap at People Play Games, and I actually think that out of like the big stack of games that I ended up buying there over those three weeks that I went, this was probably one of my favorites. It's called Crater Maze, and it's kind of like playing Pac Man a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, you have, like, a maze, and you dig holes, it's, it's like, yeah, it's, it's structured like Pac-Man a little bit, uh, but you dig holes, and when the bad guys come, and they fall in the hole, you cover them up, and you can get by, uh, and it's really addictive, like, I seriously, I think the first time I played this, I played until I got to, like, level 13 or something like that, and I was like, oh, shit, I've been playing this for, like, 45 minutes, what the hell, it's fantastic, the drinking a game of controller flask, the the beer and the controller in your hands at the same time. Never going to really have to set down the controller to drink or set down the drink to play. 30 bucks. Damn Skippy. And you know what? It'd be funny if you made a Wiimote version of that. And then whenever people go to take a drink, it fucks the whole game up. <laughs> uh, so, I also bought this next one at People Play Games. And the guy gave me like this look when I brought it up to say that I wanted it. He was just like, you sure about this? And I was like, yeah, I want to get a collection of Turbo Graphics games. I'm like... I gotta start somewhere, even if it's kinda bad, at least I have a whole bunch of games that I can say I have, and, uh, it's not good. And then lately, every time I go over to Moonbeam Arcade on Twitch, if they're streaming TurboGrafx or PC Engine stuff, Amber is usually playing this game because she knows how much people hate it and she just wants to taunt them and make them, make them mad. And it's called Deep Blue. Uh, it's a shmup, it's a horizontally scrolling shmup where you play as, like, this little, I wanna, I don't know if it's a... I want to say it's a it's a fish, but it looks like a submersible, but you're fighting other fish, and they just keep coming at you in random patterns. It is not fun. The graphics are bad. The music is bad. The controls are bad. It's not fun. It, it's ugly as shit, but for some... Yeah, there you go. That's your character, like, right here. It, yeah, it's... it. You look like a mix between a fish and a submersible. It's really bizarre. It's not good, but for some reason, I don't want to sell it. Don't ask me why. I like even when I first played it, I was like, eh. I'll keep it though. <laughs> uh, I think this one is Johnny Millennium. You know the Happy Console Gamers like most hated game on the console, and it's called Double Dungeons. It's like a dungeon crawler. I think it's kind of like if you were to play Wizardry, where you're like in 3D. Because I don't think I've actually. I bought it for really cheap. I found some guy on eBay selling this for like eight dollars, like completing the case. And I was like, oh, cool. And then I realized this was that game that Johnny Millennium, like, I think he uses this to hold one of his shelves up. <laughs> he hates it so much he won't even play it. Uh, he, he's using it to, like, I think it's because he has, like, all of his manuals and uh, strategy guides on this top shelf of one of his shelving units. And the shelf is, like, sagging in the middle. So he has, like, a poster roll holding, like, holding it up. But it's just slightly shy of actually pushing the shelf back up into place. So this is what's taking up that extra space on that poster roll <laughs> and you can see it in all of his videos with like the name pa pa pacing out and everything it's really funny that he did that uh but i think this is like a 3d dungeon crawler and i have not actually played it yet <laughs> i have played this though at great length and that's dragon spirit there's a version of this for the nes which is really good i did a review of it on my channel it was like one of the first things i did on the channel way back in like 2014 um and it's actually one of my more popular videos too which shocks the hell out of me this is the better version. It's a port of an arcade game where you play as a dragon. It's a shmup. It's a uh, vertically scrolling shmup. You play as a dragon. The power-ups will add heads to your dragon. 
And you you can also you shoot straight ahead like in every other game, but you also have bombs like in Xevious that can uh, blow things up on the ground. And there's like these little pods that will give you power ups and stuff. It is really good, like really good. It's a strange concept, but it works. And this is the best version of it. This one is way better than the NES version. And every time I hold something up, it changes <laughs> the color timing of my camera. Weird. Uh, there's a Port of Fantasy Zone on the TurboGrafx-16. You know, the Sega game came out for the Master System and everything. And it's actually a really good port. It's way better than the one that's on the Master System, I'll tell you that. Because this is actually closer to the arcade. This is as close to the arcade as you're going to get without owning the arcade game. Uh, and this also is a horizontally scrolling shmup, but you can actually go back and forth like in Defender. And the whole point is to take out these bases that are like floating around and uh, like enemies come out of them. And you can go into shops and buy upgrades and weapons and stuff like that. It's really fun. I really like this one. Okay, so normally I would not have bought this game, but then somebody online, I think it was I was talking to Michael B. the Game Genie, and he told me that this game was not all that it seems. Or is not all that it's it is. I, what is the what is the phrase? It's not all that it seems. And I it piqued my interest. There's another game here right at the end that the same thing happened. And this one is called Final Lap Twin. So it's like a indie 500 racing game. And I don't like those types of racing games. I like the arcadey kinds. The thing is, this is also an RPG. Uh, so when he said that, I was like, what? How is that an RPG? Well, yeah, you gain experience, and then you have to upgrade things like your car, your wheels, your engines, and all that kind of stuff, and you keep on doing races to gain more experience, and then you can upgrade. I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Is that a money? It's XP? I'm like, okay, what, is it fun? He goes, yes. So I picked it up, and it is. This one I was not too thrilled with. I got this also at People Play Games like during those like three-week week trips in, uh, that I made. Um, Final Zone 2, it's a sequel to a game that is on the Genesis, which I do own, and it's kind of strange because the Genesis one is like an isometric mech game, and this one is more like a side-scrolling shmup, like a, a run-and-gun. Uh, it has full-motion cartoons and voice acting, which is horrendous. Like, it is so bad, it's funny. Like, like I wish I had voice clips of this. Look them up on YouTube when you're done watching this stream. Look up Final Zone 2 and you will laugh your ass off. It is, they are so bad. The game's just okay. And it was kind of disappointing because that was kind of a pricey one. This one too. This shocks the hell out of me that it took me this long to buy it. Because every time I would see it, it was like going for 60 bucks. And then I found somebody slipping and I picked it up. And that's Galaga 1990 or Galaga 90. It's Galaga. Why is this expensive? I don't know. But it's like a souped up version of Galaga. For 1990, apparently. If you play Galaga, you played this. Okay, where's Saru Maru? Is he in here? Because this is gonna make him happy, happy. So, uh, the first. Okay, so I've gone to the Midwest Gaming Classic five five years in a row. Okay, I've gone there five times. Uh, the first two years, I just went there to shop and hang out and meet some people. The third year that I went was when I started talking on panels. So the last three years that I've gone, I've been on a panel, a discussion panel, talking about YouTube and stuff. The first year that I did it, um, it was me, Church of the Game Grinder, uh, Sheldon from Retro Games Vinyl and Beer, and Grimsy42. And one of the questions we got from the audience was, like, what are the consoles that you're finding the hardest to collect for? And when it got to me, I said the TurboGrafx CD slash or TurboGrafx 16 slash PC engine because the prices are so ridiculous sometimes. And because I said that, Saru Maru uh, was in the audience that day, and I didn't know who he was at the time, but I had kickstarted his game. I had been a Kickstarter backer for the game that he was uh, developing, and he walked up to me and he says, "Oh, hey, like you love the TurboGrafx? I'm so glad. Here's the demo to my game, Henshin Engine." And I said, "Hey, well, I'm a." I'm a backer, you know, I've given you money, so it's cool that I actually get to play, like, a physical version of the game, and it was actually just, like, the game, the game CD, uh, and the artwork, and I had to put it in my own jewel case, and that's only, like, three levels or something like that, and it's actually, like, it was really cool. Sadly, he had to change the name because Henshin Engine is, like, owned by somebody, 
So he was able to keep the name as the subtitle of the game, but he had to change the game completely. So I got this. I, Saru Maru handed this to me in person at the Midwest Gaming Classic in 2017. <laughs> and it was really cool. First time I ever met him. Uh, and then, you know, because I said I was a backer, I ended up getting FX Unit Yuki, the Henshin Engine, which is the final version of the Henshin Engine. And I haven't opened it yet. It is still sealed. Um, I will play it eventually. I also have it for the Dreamcast. Um, but it makes fun of, or it plays homage to other really popular games for the Turbo Graphics and the PC Engine, like, like the Castlevania Rondo of Blood, um, Lords of Thunder, Splatterhouse, all that kind of stuff. And I... I really want to play it, but I'm also kind of like, I don't know, maybe I'll just keep this one sealed up and just play my Dreamcast one. But, yep, it's a fantastic game. I've uh, I've played the demo, obviously. I liked what I played. It's cool. This, on the other hand, is probably the worst piece of crap I have in my collection for this console. Okay, there's a story behind it. I'll, if, I'll do the abbreviated version of it because I actually did an entire video about this game on my channel years ago when I first got it. So what happened was I went to People Play Games. When I was doing that every week, I was going there to buy Turbo Graphics games. On the third week, the clerk finally goes like, "You've been buying all these Turbo Graphics and PC Engine games. I guess you really like the console." And I said, "Yes." He goes, "Okay, so there's a company that's been trying to get into contact with us because they're a homebrew company. They want us to sell copies of their game in the store. We don't want to sell it, uh, but they gave us like a demo. I mean, they gave us like a free copy of the game so we could play the game." And tell the customers about it and all that to build excitement. We don't want it anymore. Do you want it? And the guy just handed it over to me. He goes, I'm going to give you the, the free copy of the game that they gave to us. And I took it. And I can see why they didn't want to sell it in the store. Because it is absolute trash. It is called Hypernova Blast. It's a ripoff of Defender. And a really bad one at that. And this the thing is, this game is also on a CD... So there's no excuse for why the graphics are as choppy as they are, why everything looks like a wireframe, why it just looks like crap. It looks like somebody developed this on an Atari 2600. It's horrible. The only thing good about the game is the music. But the thing is, it ends up... There's a new track. I think there's... I want to say there's like eight tracks of music on it, and they're pretty decent. It's like electronica-type stuff. And it's all right. But, like, it does not make up for the rest of the game being absolute garbage. Um... I think they've also made a couple of games, a couple of other games for the Turbo Graphics, and after playing this, I do not want any of them. Uh, so I do not recommend this one at all. The only reason I'm keeping it is because I got it for free, so it wasn't any money out of my pocket. I got it. The guy handed it to me and took it. Whatever. Uh, but it's a gar It's a piece of trash. It is absolute god awful. Like it, it, it hurt my brain playing it. It. Ugh. Uh, pick this one up at People Play Games when they were shutting down, when I got that 25% off discount off everything in the store. Uh, I was surprised that there were still good Turbo Graphics games on the shelf when I went, because people had, were raiding that joint when they were shutting down. And I picked up JJ and Jeff. Um, in Japan, this goes by a completely different name. I think the two main characters in the game are Japanese comedians, and the humor makes more sense if you're Japanese and know who they are, because I guess all the stuff that happens in the game is based on their shtick. So there's like bird poop and stuff like that in the game. I don't think any of that's actually in here. But it's a, uh, a side-scrolling platformer. It's almost like playing Pac-Land, I want to say. It's okay. Um, the controls are really clunky, but the, the sprites are actually really huge. Uh, this is the pack-in game that came with all the TurboGrafx-16s. Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. Um, it's a side-scrolling platformer. And then you play as like a little character, like a little guy. And then you get to the end of the level, you power up, you turn into a big robot, and then you do the exact same thing all over again just with, you know, a big robot. Um, it's honestly, it's really hard for, like, to find this in the case. Every time I find this game, it's just the Hue card only. And the thing is, the version that I got, and I got this off of eBay for, I think, 10 bucks. This actually came with what I thought was an extra manual. It, no, it comes with the original comic book that was included with the game when you first got it, which is pretty awesome i'm surprised i got something so complete because i don't remember the guy actually advertising that this came with this comic book which is why i didn't know that it came with it originally i didn't do a whole lot of research about it i was just like no oh, that's the most common game there is for the turbo graphics 16 you might as well have it it's not a bad game it's just really early you know it's simple but it's not bad i enjoy it 
Uh, we also have Clax, which is it's been ported on every console out there. It's on everything. It's a, uh, a puzzle game. It's kind of like playing Tetris in a way. It's a mix of like Tetris and Columns. Uh, there's a conveyor belt that is angled toward you, and there are tiles coming towards you that are all different colors, and you have to match up three of the same color, and they start coming in different patterns and stuff like that, and you have to match them up. It's It, it gets really tough, but it's really fun, and honestly, I've played a bunch of versions of Clax over the years, and I think this is probably my favorite one. You don't like it? I like it. I enjoy it. TurboGrafx Mini out soon. What's up, LV has AIDS? How's it going? I will not be buying it because I have most of the games that I want. All the game, Most of the games that I have are on it already, and I don't need to buy it. Um, so we also have Legendary Axe and Legendary Axe 2. Uh, this was the game that made me want a TurboGrafx back in, like, 89, I think it was, when the console came out. I was like, I really need to have that. And my parents were like, keep dreaming, kid. <laughs> but it's a side-scrolling beat-em-up, sort of. It's, like a, it's a side-scrolling platformer. Uh, you play as a caveman. And you have an axe. Oh. And um, you can power it up and it, more damage is done. It's it's really fun. Um, the sequel, though, is where it's at. Um, I never had this one back in the day. So I didn't know what was up. And I was watching a Game Sack episode and they were like, Legendary Axe is good. But we, we both think that Legendary Axe 2 is better. And I was like, that can't be. I remember playing Legendary Axe when I had my Turbo Graphics back in the early uh, 2000s. That game's fantastic. And then I got a copy of Legendary Axe 2 and I played it and I said, you know what? You guys are right. More weapons, more different things going on. It's actually way f more fun to play. So, Legendary Axe is great. This is even better. Which one? Which other comment? I'm making my own game for Windows, Linux, and Android. Colony 121. It's a cross between Metroid, Lost Vikings, Blaster Master, and a spaceship shooter. I'd play it. <laughs> Uh, I have the first one of them. I don't think I have the second one. Yeah, the second one, uh, the second Legendary Axe is awesome. What's up, Retro Bro? How's it going? I don't do that Raspberry Pi thing. That's cheating. So much f funny buying games you could get as a kid. Yeah, I know, right? A um, couple years ago, I think it was when I got my tax return. Um, I was like, hey, get some expensive games you can't normally afford. You got some money now. You got some. You got some spending cash. So I picked up Lords of Thunder, which was one of the few CD games over here that actually has, like, the Turbo Duo advertised on it for some reason. And I originally thought that I got a Japanese copy of it because it, because of that. And it isn't. It's Everything on it's in English. So, this is the American version. This is a uh, horizontally scrolling shmup. It's really cool. I think there's also a version of this on the Sega CD, which is super freaking expensive. You have no idea. Uh, the main claim to fame to this game, to set it apart, is the music to this game is absolutely fantastic. It's like metal, and it is great. It is fantastic. I actually listen to the music from this in my car once in a while when I want to get amped up. If I'm taking a long trip and I want to stay awake, I'll start pumping the Lords of Thunder soundtrack on my, uh, my little, uh, iPod. Just bought a Pi 4. They still don't have official retro Pi distro for it. I don't know. I don't, I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. Uh, Military Madness, I think this is called Nectaris or something in Japan. This is a strategy game, and it is a fun one at that. It's obviously like playing every other strategy game out there where you have like a grid, you move your troops, enemies move their troops. When you get close to each other, you fight, uh, and it's actually a really fun game. I wasn't really into strategy games back in the day, but this one's actually, it works. I did not think I was going to enjoy this one. I know a lot of people were talking about how great it was when I was getting back into collecting, so I bit the bullet and I bought it, and it is actually a lot of fun. Here we go with the uh, the clone of the Legend of Zelda, and it's a really good one at that. And that's Newtopia. Newtopia. Can't talk. Newtopia. Uh, there's a sequel to this, which is prohibitively expensive. I will probably never own a copy of that in my life. But as far as Legend of Zelda clones go, this one is pretty awesome. This is when okay. So when I got back into collecting, when I got that Turbo Duo. There was one specific game I was looking for, absolutely had to have when I got it, and couldn't find it on eBay. Well, it was on eBay, it was all over the place. It was either way too expensive, it was incomplete, um, or like it looked like someone stuck the Hue card up their ass. So I wasn't willing to pay any of the money. So I went into a group on Facebook, like a TurboGrafx only group, and I said, Hey, I'm looking for this specific game. If any of you are willing to sell it to me for a decent price, let me know. 
And like almost immediately, this guy's like, yeah, I've been looking to sell my copy of the game for a while. If you want it, I'll give it to you for 40 bucks. And I said, that's way cheaper than I was going to get it on eBay. That's way, way cheaper than I was going to be able to get it on eBay. So I took him up on it. And that's Ninja Spirit. This is probably one of my all-time favorite games on the TurboGrafx-16. I had this one when I was collecting back in the 2000s, the early 2000s, and absolutely loved it. Played it all the time. I played this one the most out of any game I had. And it's a side-scrolling, beat-em-up sort of, you know, like a... Well, with ninjas so it's like contra with ninjas but the coolest thing is that i think is you can get these shadows of yourself they can get like i think two extra shadows and they do the same amount of damage that you do so if you line things up properly you can be attacking with three hits at once <laughs> instead of just the one if you have the the shadows with you it's a fantastic game it's fun the graphics are really colorful and the controls are great the music is okay but i don't care about the music and it's just fantastic don't remember COB. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention that when I got back into collecting, when it came to the Turbo Graphics, I looked at the option of collecting with those big cardboard boxes that these games came in. So when these these games originally were packaged, they had this really thin cardboard box that went up to about here over the uh, disc, and they're really fragile. And if you want to buy them like that, like I buy CIB for everything. It adds basically an extra hundred bucks to each one of these games. And I was like, you know what? I just want the games in the case. I'm okay with just getting the games in the case. For one console, I'll make an exception. I will not get CIB. I will get CIC. And I'm fine with that. Now I need a drink. <sighs> Wet the tonsils. So here we are with another shmup. Didn't really know anything about it. The name and the cover are bizarre. So I said, why not? And that's Ordine. Look at that. It's another cute em up uh, horizontally scrolling one. Plays this little kid in a jet, and you're shooting things out of the sky. It's adorable. It's okay. Pack land. Oh, my God, my voice just cracked. What am I, 13? Jesus. So <clears throat> what happens when you drink. Don't drink and stream. Uh, Pack land is a port of an arcade game. Which in turn I think is based on the Pac-Man cartoon that was on Saturday mornings back then in the 80s. And um, it's actually okay. It's a, it's a Pac-Man side-scrolling platformer. It's actually not bad. I really enjoy it. Um, you play as Pac-Man. Same kind of rules apply even though there's no maze anymore. But if you find a power pellet, you get powered up. There are ghosts coming after you and stuff like that. Get the power pellet. You can kill them. Uh, but basically you're just jumping over things. The weird thing is the controls are strange. So you don't really use the directional pad. You don't really use the D-pad. Uh, you use the 1 and 2 button. And 1 moves you left and 2 moves you right. It's weird and it takes a while to get used to. I think actually you do use the D-pad to, to jump. I think you press up and you jump. It takes a while to get used to. It took me at least an hour to get used to before I stopped dying repeatedly. But it's, when you get used to it, it is pretty fun. And why is everything so dark? Nostalgia overload! Yeah, that's, that's one that I used to play in the arcade all the time. I loved it. You're gonna buy one terabyte uh, solid state hard drive. Noise. There is an option on the turbo version? Oh, okay, I need to look into that. Um, here is a really unique shmup. And I was so glad that I jumped on it when I did because I bought it on eBay and I want to say like two weeks later, I think Metal Jesus or somebody talked about it on eBay or not on eBay. Someone talked about it on YouTube and all of a sudden the price went through the roof. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm lucky I got that one when I did. It's called Psychosis. This game is fantastic. It's another horizontally scrolling shmup. But the unique thing about this one is that like reality breaks in this game. Like enemies rip through reality to get to you. So you'll be like, you know, flying along. All of a sudden you'll see this tear appear like in the background, and an enemy will come out of it to shoot at you. And it is really, really cool. Uh, and it's fun to play. The graphics are cool. It's really creative. Weird-ass shit going on in this game, but I really enjoy it. This is one of my favorites. That's like a diamond in the rough for the uh, Turbo. Uh, we also have another shmup. We have the port of R-Type. This game is on every freaking console out there. I'm surprised there wasn't one for the Atari 2600. <laughs> or the Commodore 64. Well, I'm sure the Commodore 64 did have one. What the hell are you talking about, Chris? Uh, but this is a decent one. It still has, like, I guess my big problem. I love Super R-Type for the Super Nintendo. But it has a ton of slowdown. 
And I was just, I've been looking for like a version of R-Type that does not have a lot of slowdown. And this one does. But it's still okay. It's a decent version of the game. The Super version on the Super Nintendo is better. Up to jump always pissed me off in any game that forced you to use that instead of the actual jump button. I know that's, it makes no sense. But like the thing, I it was trying to mimic the controls of the arcade game. And I think they should just, just yeah, little, 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 little. This, this is not alcoholic, people. This is just straight up Gatorade. Um, I'm surprised, like, well, I'm glad now that I found out that there is a way to change the controls. But I think they should have just uh, made the controls work specifically for the console. You know, just, you know, one jump, one is jump, one might be run faster. And then this is to move back and forth and all that junk. Like every other game out there. We have sidearms. Which is all, what, what, the second most common game available for this console? Um, I got this dirt cheap at People Play Games. I think I got it for like $3. <laughs> it's another shmup. It's okay. Gatorade with vodka. No. Okay, so I still haven't played this one, so I cannot tell you what it is about. But the name and the cover alone made me say I needed to have it. I got it off of a guy on Facebook in a turbo group. And I said, give it to me. I want it. I remember somebody telling me that it was pretty cool. So that's why I bought it. It's called Silent Debuggers. I don't know what kind of a game it is. <laughs> I should probably look it up at some time. Or maybe even play it. <laughs> What's up, William Stewart? How is it going? Welcome to the stream. Uh, this is another great unknown shmup. It's called Sinistron. Um, when I first got this, I was playing it. And I think I played this for like three or four days in a row. Uh, it's another horizontally scrolling shmup, and it is fantastic. I still haven't played this one, though. Got this at People Play Games when they were closing. Also, when I got JJ and Jeff. It's Tailspin, based on the Disney cartoon that I used to watch all the time back in the day. It was one of the only cartoons that I would watch. Because when this came out, I was a little too old to be watching cartoons. But I enjoyed the characters because uh, the Jungle Book, the, the Disney movie, the animated one, was one of my favorite cartoon movies or animated movies when I was a little, little kid. So, seeing, like, those characters, like, in a new setting and all that kind of, like, made me say yes. So, I loved watching this. Um, I used to have the Genesis version of Tailspin, and I absolutely hated it. Uh, but this is not that version. This is not a port. It's its own thing. And I'm kind of afraid to play it because I don't want it to suck. <laughs> if it does, I should probably plug this in tomorrow and give it a shot. Give it a whirl. Sidearms. It's, it's, uh, Sidearms is just another shmup. This is one of the real expensive ones for the console, and I don't know why, because there's versions of this like on every freaking console out there. Why this one is like in demand, I don't know. But it's Turrican. You know, I have Super Turrican for the Super Nintendo. I have the uh, uh, reskinned Turrican, which they turn into uh, a Universal Soldier game for the Genesis. Uh, I have another one somewhere too. I do not remember where. But yeah, Turrican. It's a side scrolling run and gun, kind of like Contra. Uh, but you can turn yourself into a little spiked ball if you get into trouble, kind of like in uh, Metroid. Uh, it's fun. It's great. The music is fantastic. I don't know why it's so expensive because, like I said, this game has been ported to everything. It's a it's a Commodore. It started off as a Commodore 64 game, people. I don't know. Maybe they didn't make many copies of it or something. Maybe it's because they actually have the font of the game on the side of the uh, on the uh, label instead of like having that generic uh, font for all the game titles. I don't know. Who knows? Okay, so this was one of the first games I bought when I got my Turbo Duo, and that's Valis 2. Obviously a sequel to Valis. Uh, I think the only thing you can get the original Valis on is the Genesis. We never got Valis 2 on the Genesis. We kind of did. Uh, it was called Sid of Valis, and it was like a super deformed version of Valis 2. Um, which made no sense to me, why they would kitty it up like that, but it's a side-scrolling hack and slash, uh, you play as this girl who gets this, like, special sword, and it kind of turns her into Wonder Woman, and she goes around killing people with it. Uh, I've played the games on the Genesis, and I really enjoyed them, but then when I played this, I was like, this is on a freaking CD, this is one of the CD games, the only thing good about it is the music, the play control is terrible, the graphics are super choppy, the animation is really choppy, I don't, I was like, what is this crap? Don't you think having it on a CD would give you, like, more memory to make things animate better and all that kind of stuff? And apparently not. Uh, this also has god-awful voice acting in it. Like, really god-awful. Like, it makes you want to rip your ears off bad. And also has animated cutscenes, which are pretty cool. And then at this year's Midwest Gaming Classic, 
saw this at the exact same table where I got Rondo of Blood, um, but I didn't. I passed it over the first day. On Sunday, I went back and I made a deal for it, and that's for Valus Three. I had Valus Three on the Genesis. So I thought it was fantastic. This is a big step up from Valus Two for the Turbo Graphics. Um, it's almost the exact same thing. It's another side-scrolling hack and slash. Same thing. Girl turns into Wonder Woman type character and goes around whooping everyone's ass. Uh, with this one, the animation's been improved. The graphics are better. It plays a hell of a lot better. Still has the craptastic voice acting. So, if you're going to get a Valus game on the TurboGrafx-16, Valus 3 is the one to do, or one to go with. Oh my god, I'm talking so much, I am rambling. Turkin is awesome. That's why it's so expensive? Because it was it was hard to find complete? Really? That's weird. Yeah, it was real. Yeah, Valus Two is not good. Valus Three is great. Valus Two, for some reason, I was like, "Wow, this! You're on a CD. You have all this memory to play around with, and you make this." I'm like, no. The only thing good about it is the music. Uh, this is a sequel to Renegade, I do believe. It's called Vigilante. It's a beat 'em up. Um, the the sprites are pretty big for this type of game. Uh, I just don't like the way it controls. So, I can't even beat the first boss for some reason. I don't know why. I suck at it. This game, just one of those that I can't stand. But, yeah, for a beat em up eh. Okay, so, I was talking about Final Lap Twin being a racing game and an RPG at the same time. Well, what would you do if you found out that there is a tennis game that's also an RPG? Uh, so, World Court Tennis is an R a tennis RPG. So I think Michael B. the Game Genie also told me about this one. And I was like, that is crazy. I was like, I kind of need that in my life. And then the third day that I went to People Play Games to buy all those Turbo games I was talking about, this was sitting on their shelf. They put it out that day. And I was like, God damn it, give it to me. And I got it for, I think, a whopping 15 bucks. Um, and yeah, it's a tennis RPG. And it's not bad. And then the final game I have for the Turbo Graphics is... Ease Book 1 and 2. This is the first game I bought at People Play Games when I was going there for those three weeks in a row. Uh, Johnny Millennium had just talked about this on his channel, and I absolutely loved what I was seeing. I had never played an Ease game before that. I always wanted to, never had the opportunity to. I know it's out on every freaking console out there, but I just never got around to doing it. So I figured if I'm going to play it, this is going to be the way to do it. And holy crap, this game is fantastic. The music is by Yuzo freaking Kashiro. The guy that did the music for uh, Act Razor, which is my favorite game of all time. I absolutely adore the music in that game. Music in this game is fantastic. It's a pseudo RPG. It's more like Legend of Zelda ish. But the thing is, for the combat, you don't actually like slash at things. You run into them. <laughs> so like, if you see an enemy coming at you, you just walk into them and just keep pushing up against them. And like, it's like a a, a roll of the dice. You might get hit. They might get hit. You know, it's interesting it takes a little bit getting used to but holy crap having the first two games on one cd with fantastic music graphics cutscenes, everything yeah it's fantastic this is probably one of my favorite games that i have on cd for the turbo graphics and holy crap i've got this gigantic stack of games here and they're probably going to fall over on my face do not die chris do not die what's up telesplash i might stop watching the stream and go play it oh don't go <laughs> uh I love easy to have that one. I'm late to the party. Yeah, well, no, that's just the Turbo Graphics stuff. I still got all this other stuff I'm going to talk about. So, I figured uh, I'd, you know, talking about this stack of games here that would take maybe 45 minutes, and it's almost it's taking me just a little over an hour. Uh, so I said, why not also talk about the Atari Lynx? So, back in the day, grandmother, bless her heart. Uh, I was kind of, my brother and I were, my, my parents didn't really spoil us, but when it came to my grandmother, my grandmother spoiled me and my brother rotten. Uh, so if like my parents wouldn't buy us something, we'd always go, Grandma, Mom, Mom and Dad won't buy us this thing we want. Would you buy it for us? And usually she would. Um, so I was sick of playing my Game Boy. Um, I didn't want a Game Gear at that point in time. I wanted the Lynx because Atari. I had a fondness for Atari because Atari 2600 was my first video game console back in the day. So I wanted to you know, keep the love going for Atari. So I really wanted an Atari 20 or an Atari Lynx. So I convinced her to buy me one. We did. We went to this little software store that specialized in PC games, but for some reason they also had the Atari Lynx for sale there. Go figure. There we go. Um, 
and she bought me the console and like a carrying case and i think three or four games at once and i adored it i absolutely loved it uh my friends were always like i want that too but they never actually bought one uh the games were fun sometimes they were hard to figure out they were vague (laughs) but i always enjoyed it and the only reason i sold it was because i wanted to get a super nintendo or not super nintendo jesus i wanted to get a nintendo 64 um so what are the games i have well i have probably more than half of the library for this console and the thing is i don't think the link sold very well so every time i buy a game off of ebay or something the games are still sealed it's like there is a ton of new old product out there and it's dirt cheap I think there's only maybe like five or six games for this console that are hard to get. And they're the common ones, which make no sense. Like California games. Excuse me, I just burped a little bit. California games was bundled with the uh, the links that I got. And for some reason, it's one of the most expensive games out there for the console right now. Which makes no sense to me, but whatever. Uh, so what do I do have? I have APB, which is a Portland Arcade game where you play as a cop. And it's kind of like playing... Um, Spy Hunter with Cops. It's actually pretty fun. I enjoy it. We have a port, or not a port, we have a version of Batman Returns on the Lynx, which I really enjoyed. I had this one back in the day. It was one of my favorite games to play on it. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up. It's really hard. Like, like really hard. But once you learn the patterns of things and you start to memorize when things are going to happen and when enemies are going to pop out... It's actually pretty easy, and the game, to be honest, is really short. I think it only has, like, four levels to it. So you could probably beat this game in about 20 minutes if you really wanted to. I enjoyed a lot. This one doesn't actually have a game in it. I have the manual. I have the box. I just need the game. Uh, It's Battlezone 2000. People play games after they shut down. uh, I guess the building that people play games was in was supposed to be turned into like condos or something and that's why they had to shut down the guy that owned the building decided to sell it and it was going to be developed into condos it never happened so basically they shut the store down and until they were told that they had to clear out they left all their stock and leftover inventory in the store it sat there for over a year nothing ever happened so they had a hey let's clear the building out sale before something actually does happen so they reopened the store for a whole weekend and everything was like dirt cheap so it was a free-for-all i swear to god i almost had to punch somebody to get into like a bin to look and see what they had in this one bin it was crazy i've never seen that place that busy uh but i went up to buy all the stuff that i had in my little stack and this was sitting right in front of the register and i picked it up and it's battlefield 2000 it's a port of the arcade game battlefield where it's all wireframe tanks and stuff like that you're shooting at it's a first person tank game uh but the guy goes oh yeah just so you know there's no game in that box uh somebody actually like stole the game out and just left the box behind i was like there that's stupid what the hell so if anyone has a copy of battlefield 2000 loose that they want to sell let me know uh we have another licensed game we have bill and ted's excellent adventure uh it's a top-down legend of zelda style adventure game it's okay it follows the movie a little bit but you go to a couple more places that you didn't go to in the movie uh like you know i don't remember you going to egypt at all but you do in this and you're just basically looking for clues. So it says here, Bill and Ted are about to embark on their most excellent adventure through time and space. Those two beautiful babes from medieval England, Joanna and Elizabeth, have been kidnapped by the most heinous Grim Reaper. Bill and Ted must use the circuits of time to find the princesses. Will they be most triumphant? Only you can help. And honestly, if there was a game based on Bill and Ted, this is the best one. Uh, the one for the NES, I don't like. I probably will never buy it. Uh, even though I enjoy LJN games, that one is just not fun to play. This one is. It's kind of cool. It's like a weird... It's There's stuff from the first movie in it. There's stuff from the second movie in it. But it's its own thing. So it's kind of like, I guess you want to say, the third movie, I guess. I don't know. It's actually pretty decent. Here's a good one. Blue Lightning. I think this was a launch game for the Lynx. And it's like Afterburner. It's a behind-the-plane 3D-type shooter. Uh, you can kind of see what it looks like there. And it's really cool. It has a... Like, one of the things people don't realize that the Lynx is... The Lynx basically is a Super Nintendo. It had scrolling. It had, you know, all the Mode 70-type things. It could do all that stuff. Just no one talked about it. No one gave a crap because Atari was, like, on its way out at that point in time. But, like, playing Blue Lightning is actually really impressive. Yeah, the sequel to this, Blue Thunder, is on the Turbo, or the uh, Jaguar CD. 
yeah, playing this on a little handheld like the Lynx is actually really impressive. I was when I played it the first time, I was just like, wow, this is this is kind of amazing. And then we have like Chips Challenge, which is I think another light or uh, launch game, and it's like playing Minesweeper. It's not fun. It's like a little puzzle game where you play. There's a little dude walking around on tiles and stuff. It, when I bought my Lynx, now um, I bought it I think two years ago. Uh, when I bought it, it came with like 25 inbox games, and Chips Challenge was one of them. So I got the Lynx, the uh, carrying case, a battery pack, and like 25 box games with it at the same time. It was kind of pricey, but I mean, for all the things I got with it, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's actually worth it. Uh, we got Crystal Mines 2, obviously a sequel. I think the original game came out on the uh, Atari 5200 or the 7800 or something like that. Um, and it's like a little side-scrolling puzzle game. It's okay. I haven't played it much, which is why I'm not talking about it. We have Dirty Larry Renegade Cop. Uh, this is a, a side-scrolling, well... It's a run and gun, sort of, but it's really slow. Uh, it's making fun of Dirty Harry, obviously. But you can see the graphics are actually really nice. So, it's... Like I said, the, the Lynx doesn't get a lot of uh, uh, kudos for the graphic capabilities that it has. Kind of like with this one. This one is just freaking amazing. It's called Dracula the Undead. And it's like a point-and-click adventure type game. And, I mean, it, it's moody, it's atmospheric, I mean, everything is like in that sepia tone. It's really, really good. Like, it's, it is slower paced, obviously, it's an adventure type game. God damn this camera. Uh, but it is fantastic. This is one of the best games on my links. I was watching Pete Dore stream that one night on Twitch, and I was like, gotta get it, gotta have it. Lynx games used to come in gigantic boxes for some reason, even though the games themselves... Like, let's, let's, let's have a little comparison here once I hold this up. And the games, the cartridges themselves, have changed shape at least three times. If you collect for this thing, you'll find that out. So we have Gates of Zendikon, which is a uh, horizontally scrolling shmup. It's the basic bitch that it is. It's fun, but there's really nothing to it. It's just generic as all hell. But you see how big this game is, or this box is? The cartridge is this big. Does that make any sense? Which is why they switched to these smaller boxes, obviously. Uh, but this is the only game I have in this large box. I think Blue Thunder also came in a box that large uh, originally, but I have the second revision of it, I guess. And the cartridge itself is, like, flat. Normally they have a curve to the back so you can pull them out of the, the uh, system easier. But... I think they changed it because people were complaining about, oh, I put the card in, but I can't get it back out again because they have, like, these little, like, ridges on it that you're supposed to be able to get your fingernails under. But, you know, like, you're like me and you cut your nails. You know, it's really hard to get out. That's how you know you're a bad A. You walk and gun. Walk and gun? What are you talking about? What are you guys talking about? You're confusing me. Talk to me. Tell me something. This one's cool. Gauntlet, the third encounter. I was not aware that there was a third Gauntlet game when uh, I picked this up. I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's a thing. Was it an arcade game? I don't know. But the weird thing about this is you can only play it. So the Lynx is a long console. Like, it, it, you have your screen in the middle, and you have, like, this long... The original version of it especially is, like, I swear to God, it's, like, this long. Like, if I were to hold this box up, it's probably this long. It's huge. It was massive. And, like... In the commercial with Tobey Maguire, I don't know if you've ever seen the original Lynx commercial, uh, where Tobey Maguire sneaks out of class so he can go and hide in the bathroom on a toilet and play the Lynx. They show him pull it out of his the inside of his like jean jacket that he's wearing, and seriously, it's like half the size of it. It's like half the length of his body. How are you able to hide that successfully? You can't even put that in your pocket, really. Uh, the revision two, which is the one that I have, is actually about this big. But to play Gauntlet, the third A or the the third encounter, you have to turn it uh, vertically and play it with one hand down here on the control pad and the other hands up here using the buttons because of the uh, the way the screen is designed. And you can see it here. It's awkward at first, but you get used to it. And it's another great version of Gauntlet. It's the exact same game. You know, it's just a dungeon crawler. It's fun. I enjoy it. Halo LAN parties. Oh, man, I miss having Halo LAN parties. I should honestly... I know my other friend, my friend Justin, has a an OG Xbox also. And he still has the Halo games. I should bring him over 
and a bunch of other friends, and we should have a freaking old school LAN party just because. That would be great. Only thing that kind of sucks is one of the other games we used to play LAN parties, or I used to play when we'd have LAN parties, was um, uh, Time Splitters Future Perfect. And there were levels that you could download off the web that because it has a, a level creator that you can make your own levels. And I would download other people's levels, and the ones that we all liked, I would keep. I don't have the same Xbox anymore, so all those are gone, and obviously you can't find those anymore. They're all disappeared off the web. That would be great. Play ter- play Time Splitters again with everybody. Oh. Uh, we got Gordo 106, where you play as an escaped uh, monkey that's been or a little chimpanzee that's been experimented on, and it's like a little platformer. It's fun. It's okay. Uh, we have a port of Hard Driving, which was like one of the first Polygon games out there. It was an arcade game by Atari. Um, it was super slow and clunky, and it was not all that fun, but it actually kind of works on the links for some reason. I don't know why. You would think that it would be garbage also, but for some reason it runs pretty pretty smoothly on the links. I don't know why. Um, I had that on the Genesis, and I absolutely despised it. It was like one of the... When I got back into collecting, I was like... I was just trying to like amass as many games as I possibly could, and I got hard driving in a uh, a lot that I bought, like a, a lot on eBay, and I played it when I when it first showed up, and I was like, nope, that's going, and I got rid of it real fast. I brought it over to people to play games. I'm like, take this off my hands. I do not want it. It's garbage. Uh, we got Hydra, which is kind of like playing uh, Hydro Thunder a little bit, uh, but it's more about combat. Uh, if you've ever played Stun Runner, it's like that on the water. Uh, so it's like a behind the the boat shmup kind of game. It's fun. It's really enjoyable. I like this one a lot. Still don't know what to make of this one. I picked this up at People Play Games when they were closing down, and I got it for I think two dollars and fifty cents because they were like like I said they were clearancing everything out, and they had like five copies of this, and no one was buying. So I was like, I'll take a copy of Bushido. Was it Bushido? The Way of Stones off your hands i'll buy it for you and the guy's like yeah it's two bucks and fifty cents i'm like sold american um i don't remember this isn't uh mahjong but it's mahjong like it's like a puzzle game i can't figure it out i need to probably read the instructions uh here's a great port of joust uh the one thing that the lynx was known for was it had great ports of old arcade games and joust is one of my all-time favorites uh, thankfully you do not have to hold the links vertically <laughs> like you do when you're playing Gauntlet, uh, because I do remember the arcade version of Joust, actually the screen was shaped like that. Uh, but no, it's been, uh, optimized to be played on the links, and it is actually really good. I got this at the Midwest Gaming Classic last year, randomly just saw this sitting on account on, uh, one of the guy's tables, and it was five bucks, so I picked it up, and I was not sad about it. I was talking about Clax on the, the Turbo Graphics. well, I also have it for the links. And it's a decent version of it. It's I'd rather just play it on the Turbo Graphics. This came with the uh, Links when I bought it, and I was like, I'm what? I mm. it's called Kung Fu. Uh, you play as a guy made of broccoli, and it's a beat 'em up, and you're just beating up other food people, and it's not good. It's pretty bad. Dirty layer of walking gun. Uh, Malibu Bikini Volleyball. This also came with the links when I bought it. It's not good. <laughs> Although that is a very suggestive cover, I will say. It's all about the cleavage. Uh, yeah, this came with the console when I bought it, so I was just kind of like, yeah, sure, whatever. But I absolutely had to get this one. I needed this one in my life. I had this back in the day. Absolutely loved it. And it's the only version of this game you can get. This is the only place you can get it, is what I mean. Um, Ninja Gaiden. It's not the NES game. This is the arcade game. The arcade game, which was a beat-em-up. This is the only port of the arcade game out there. And it's awesome. Uh, you play as Ryu also in this, but you are beating the crap out of people. Instead of using a sword, you do, you're doing flips, and you can grab onto like telephone poles and swing around them and stuff like that. Throw people into uh, telephone booths and stuff. It's awesome. You can kind of see it. The pictures on the back are really like blurry and stuff, but... It's a beat em up. It's fantastic. I when I found out about that back in the day when I had my links in the early nineties, I like actually like the moment I found out about it in a magazine, I walked out of the house, got on a bus, went to the local mall, bought a copy of it. <laughs> 
But there is a port of Ninja Gaiden 3, Ancient Ship of Doom for the Lynx, which shocks the hell out of me. And it is the NES game. The whole thing. Cutscenes and everything. Uh, really unfair as well. I've watched, uh, what's it called? Great White North stream the uh, NES game on Twitch. And I was like, I I think the first game is hard. The second game I find really easy. The, the second game, or the first game, I was like, that looks even worse. I was like, god damn, it's just as hard on the whole on a handheld and it's even harder to play on the handheld too because there is a mod you can buy for the screen for the links to make it uh i think it's a new lcd and it's obviously it'll make it brighter and everything uh because the one i have still has the original screen and it's kind of hard to see sometimes the brightness uh setting on it is not great uh so playing that is kind of a pain in the ass but then there's pinball jam which has elvira in it yum 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 yummy 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 some um, and it has two pinball games in it. It has uh, Elvira and the Party Monsters and Police Force. Okay. Uh, the Elvira game is okay. The Police Force one is all right. But it's video game pinball. And here's the thing. Okay, so I think I talked about this last... No, it was when I was talking about the Genesis game. So it was a couple weeks back. Uh, the Lynx has the best version of Pit Fighter. Don't ask me why. It just does. Um, it's a beat em up. It was one of the first games to actually use digitized actors, kind of like Mortal Kombat. Uh, in the arcade, it was okay. It was clunky. It was the first time anyone had done anything like that. Uh, so it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It's like you in a, in like a, like a underground pit fighting. And, uh, you have like three different characters you can pick from. One's fast, one's like strong, but slow. One guy's like really fast, but weak. And then there's like the mid range guy. Um, it's Okay. I used to have the uh, Super Nintendo version. It is terrible. Then I got the Genesis version, which is okay. But for some reason, the Lynx one is the best one out of them all. Don't ask me why. Like I said, the Lynx gets all the good ports. Go figure. Joust still holds up. Love that game. Yeah, Joust is great. And Kung Fu is horrible. I'm planning on doing a video on my channel with a guest host where I drink and recreate Joust in Game Maker Studio and see what I can do to make it better, adding power ups, etc. That actually would be pretty cool. Buzz, thank you, Kato, for the win. Uh, power Factory, or sorry, Power Factor. Uh, this is a side scrolling run and gun, and it is super cryptic, and it is not all that fun. It came with the console when I got it. Uh, but I watched, what was it, World of Long Plays on YouTube play through it, and I was like, wow. The stuff they're doing in that game, I wouldn't think to do. Like, there's things that you think are parts of the background, and it's an item you have to pick up. I wouldn't have thought of that. Sometimes, like, these games feel like that they were just, like, thought up in a weekend and cranked out just so they could sell it. And that thinks uh, looks like one of them to me. Uh, that's why I've never really gotten into it. If it didn't come with the console already, I probably wouldn't have bought it. But if I do want to get a complete Link set, which is a possibility, I have to have it. Doesn't mean I'm going to play it a whole lot, though. We got a port of Kicks, classic arcade game that I was also on the NES. I remember, I used to play it on the NES all the time. Where you basically are, you have an arena and you have to block off sections of it. And once you block it off, it's it's unavailable anymore. And you're there's like a little spark flying around. And if it touches you or your line when you're blocking off a section, you die. It's actually a decent version of it. It's just kind of hard to see sometimes because the screen is so small. Forty-five minutes to an hour to make a game from scratch that's close to better than the original. Actually, uh, Jason from Corpse Flood Gaming and I were talking about doing this thing when um, the new RPG Maker comes out for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, I think in March. We're going to each make an RPG of our own and then send it to the other person and then we're going to review their game on our channels. <laughs> uh, here's a really good version of Rampart. Uh, Rampart was also available on the NES. Uh, it's a strategy sort of tower defense type game it's actually pretty decent um i never played the one on the nes though so honestly i say this is the best version it's the best version i've played and this is the only one i've played <laughs> remember when i was talking about uh during the nes uh the nes stream i was talking about mad max and how the reason i excuse me the reason i hate mindscape as a developer is because they screwed me out of the games that they were going to give me for, for beta testing mad max uh, one of the games that I wanted from them, the one that they never sent me in the mail as payment for beta testing Mad Max was Road Blasters. I did get it for the links though, not the NES like I wanted. Um, it's an arcade game. You play. It's basically Mad Max 
from behind the car. Uh, it's like a racing game and a shooter at the same time. Uh, a lot of these games were kind of like uh, Stun Runner. And this is one of them. Well, this is one that's like that. Uh, Hydra's like that also. Stun Runner's probably my favorite game for the Lynx. It's coming up pretty soon. We got Robo Squash, which came with the console when I bought it. And it's kind of like playing, what was that, Glove Ball? Or whatever it was called for the NES, where you have like a ball bouncing back and forth into the foreground and into the background. And you have to like rebound it until somebody misses. And it it's like playing Pong in 3D. Yeah. I played it once, and I'll probably never play it again. Also picked this up at last year's Midwest Gaming Classic. It's a port of Robotron 2084. And it's kind of hard to play because the screen is small. The characters are small. Hard to figure out what is a friendly and what is a foe. Uh, but once you get used to it, you can kind of muddle through. So not the best way to play that. Here, this one is awesome. We got Rygar. Yeah, Rygar was on the links, guys. Uh... It's based more on the arcade game than what the NES game was. The NES game was kind of like changed completely to make it a longer game. Uh, but this is still a side-scrolling, I want to say beat-em-up. And it's fantastic. Everything about it is great. It looks great. It plays great. It sounds great. That's a definite must-buy if you are a Lynx collector. Games thought up in a weekend and cranked out. 1983 video game crash. Anyone? Haha. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. That's Atari's MO, man, but it wasn't Atari that was doing that kind of crap. That was uh, all the other people that were, like, doing the unlicensed stuff. We got Scrappy Our Dog, which is a port of a game that came out on the, 20, the 7800. And basically, he plays this kid, and it says, Can Louie save his pooch from becoming dog meat? Our friend Louis loved his dog, but why would some thugs kidnap his poor puppy? The thugs want the deed to the scrapyard, that's why. Will Louie stand for this? It's up to you and Louie to survive over 15 levels of danger and find the ultimate bad guy, Mr. Big. So, it's kind of like a side-scrolling platformer. And it looks just like a 7800 game. It really does. It's just like they just took the code and just put it on a cartridge over here. This one is impressive. Uh, because this is a Sega Gen this game was out for the Sega Genesis and the uh, Amiga. It's an Amiga game that got ported over, and that's Shadow of the Beast. I wanted this because it's a game by Cygnosis, and I'm trying to get all those Cygnosis console games, so I absolutely had to have it for that reason, but also because this version's better than the Genesis one. And I have both one and two for the Genesis, and this whoops its ass. And it's a, a side scrolling sort of beat em up puzzle game. Uh, and you play as this guy who's been turned into like a creature and you're trying to get Venganza and it's pretty good. Shanghai. It came with the console, so yeah, it's Mahjong. Yippee Yahoo. Uh, we got Steel Talon, uh, which is a helicopter flight sim at you know, like a shoot 'em up that's all in polygons on the freaking links damn skippy it's slow it's just like uh what was it hard driving it's slower but it's fun and it works so i can't complain like i said the lynx is really an impressive little console just no one gives it the time of day but now we're at my favorite game for this console and that is stun runner which is an into the screen racing type of game where you are this little like rocket ship and you're going through tunnels, like circular tunnels, and you can actually run up the tunnels and go along the walls and all that. And there's enemies that you need to fight, and there's like points you need to collect and all that. It is fantastic. I played the crap out of this in the arcade, and an actual one that you sit in like a motorcycle and control it that way. They had it at the local arcade by my, uh, the mall by my house back in the day. And when this came out for the Lynx and I had my Lynx, this was, I ran out and picked it up and I was not sad that I did and I still absolutely love it. I play it all the time. Mostly when I'm taking a shit. Ha <laughs> ha! TMI. Uh, Super Squeak. I also got this with the uh, console when I got it and I never played it. Uh, but it looks like a puzzle game. Can't tell you what it's all about. I can read the back for you. How do you keep a monster away? Paint his place pink. What? You will have to help Squeak to paint all 50 levels, rescue the kidnapped Squeezettes, and avoid being killed by the monsters all at once. It's not as easy as it sounds. Way to sell a game, guys. That, okay. Whatever. Uh, we got Switchblade 2, which is a port of another Amiga game. I just got Switchblade 1 for the Genesis. Uh, Pico Interactive 
bought the rights to the Commodore 64, or maybe that was an Amiga game also, uh, the original Amiga game, and ported it to the Genesis and uh, did like an Indiegogo uh, so they can get it on cartridge. And I did the Indiegogo, and it's okay. Uh, it, as a Genesis game, I don't think it really works. But the sequel is actually really cool on the links, and it's almost the exact same game. It's like a side-scrolling platform puzzler uh, with some beat-em-up aspects to it, and it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not sad that I own this one. Talked about this in the Genesis one. I also talked about this game in the uh, Genesis Diamonds in the Rough video, and that's Todd's Adventures in Slime World. Uh, the This is where I originally played this game was on the Lynx. This was one of the games my grandmother bought me when we got the Lynx originally back in the day. And it's a side-scrolling platformer where you play as this guy who crashes on a planet made out of slime, and you need to find parts to repair your ship, so you got to climb through all these caverns made out of slime, and your only weapon is a water gun. And water is what is, like, the health in this game. So if you start to get covered in slime, your character will start turning a darker and darker shade of green. And once you get, like, really, really dark, you're dead. If you want to survive, you have to start finding little ponds of water where you can wash yourself off. And that's, like, the health in the game. And everything in the game is allergic to water, so that's why you have a squirt gun. It is fantastic. And then when I found out that this had a port to the Genesis, you have no idea how fast I ran to a Funko Land to pick it up because... I love this game so much on the links. I wanted to be able to play it on my television, which is why I picked it in my uh, Diamonds in the Rift of the Genesis video. We got a port of Toki, which is an arcade game where you play as this cave dude who gets turned into a chimpanzee that shoots fireballs out of his mouth, and you're going after your girlfriend. Uh, there was just a remaster of this for the Switch that came out maybe like a year ago, which I have, which is really fantastic. Uh, but yeah, it's a great port of a great arcade game. Shanghai and Mahjong, the exact same thing. Yeah, they're the exact same thing. It's just I think they tried to license. You can't really put like a TM on Mahjong because that's just the general name for the whole, you know, the game. So Shanghai is what they licensed. Uh, we have Tournament Cyberball, which is football with robots. I got this at People Play Games for like a buck fifty, So that's why I own it. Don't like sports games. But like I said, if I'm going for a complete uh, Lynx uh, collection, I have to have it. We got Turbo Sub. Which is a, uh, it's like playing Battlezone, where it's like inside the sub. Instead of being inside a tank, you're in a sub, obviously. Uh, but it's inside the sub, you're looking through like the periscope, and there's like, it's like a futuristic sub game. It's really cool, and the graphics are really impressive. Like, it's got all the scaling and everything you can want. Like I said, the Lynx is a very powerful little system, and it impresses me every time I play something like that, where I'm like, I didn't realize this console can do that, and it looks great while it does. Viking Child, which is a uh, platformer it's okay came with the console had to go out of my way to get this one we got warbirds now this isn't really like a there isn't a story mode or anything like that it's basically a bunch of skirmishes red baron style so it's like world war one biplane fighting or dog fighting and it's in 3d and <laughs> it is scaling scroll all that shit it is fantastic and it is so much fun and it is tense uh, you can actually, like, while you're sitting in the cockpit, you actually have the ability to, like, look all around to keep track of the other uh, plane that's after you. This is probably my second favorite game on the Lynx, and it's a port of an arcade game, which I love, and I think this is the only place it got ported to, and that's Zybots. I do not have a Streamlabs. I cannot get it to work on anything I have. So, you can, you can donate your love. How about that? Uh, Zybots is a 3D run and gun type of game where your character's right in front of the screen and when you move forward the level moves forward towards you one for one like block and when you turn the whole game turns and you're going through like these underground mazes there's robots everywhere you have to destroy and it is really super fun and very addictive and i play this one the most out of any other game after stun runner so like i said my, my second favorite game on the console and lastly we have zarlor mercenary which is a vertically scrolling shmup and not a very good one at that it is another just like uh gates of zendikon it's a very basic bitch type of game so it's okay and that's it for the links and then finally i have my tiger game com so i had no intention of collecting for this console but one day i went to my local half price books after work there's an Alien vs. Predator demo on the links. What? Where? How? 
I had uh, when I had a Jaguar back in the day. I had Alien vs. Predator for it, and I loved it. Um, never had interest in the GameCom back when it was first released in like the early '90s. Um, it was like trying to be like the Game Boy, even though you had the Lynx and the Game Gear out there, which were in color and backlit. The GameCom was black and white, not green and black or whatever it was that the Game Boy was. It was black and white. They had a lot of high-profile licenses or games that were licensed to be played on it. Um, its main claim to fame was that it was internet capable, and you could send like email through it and stuff like that. And it had a stylus and a touch screen and all that. And it was, you know, Tiger though didn't have the greatest uh, reputation back then. They were making those dinky little Tiger handheld games that were like simple little LCD games based on really popular games. Like, I had one based on Ninja Gaiden. I had one based on Castlevania 2. I had one based on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They were not good. They even came up with that stupid R-Zone thing that went over your eye, and they used it as a prop in Hackers. Uh, but they tried to create a genuine console or portable console with a GameCom, and nobody bought. Even though they had really good games or really good licenses on the console, nobody cared. And, like, bombed big time. I remember seeing it at my local KB Toys and going like, there's no, no, I do not want that at all. But, like I said, one day after work, I went to my local Half Price Books and someone had sold them, like, their collection of GameCom games and they were selling them for, like, three or four bucks each at the at the store, complete in the box. And when I saw what one of them was, I said, shit, kind of need to have those now. So, uh, I'll go over the games that I have. I only have six. Uh, and honestly, it would be really easy to get a complete collection of this because I think there's only 12 games available for this stupid thing. I don't even have the console. I don't even know if I will get it. We'll see. Uh, but we got Duke Nukem 3D. And yes, it is a port of the first person shooter. You can kind of see it. Can't tell you if it's any good. I can't tell you if any of these games are good or not, but I'm going to assume that they're not. Uh, otherwise, this thing would have sold better. Got this at People Play Games when they were shutting down. I got it for like five bucks. So I wasn't going to pass that up. And the games themselves, like if you think that uh, Switch games are small, this is 1990, 1990 what? 1997 this one came out? I'm trying to think what the earliest one was. It had to have been around 1995. But look how tiny these cartridges are. They are beyond small. These are smaller than the smallest handheld game ever back then. But the games are supposedly garbage, so... Maybe they should have made the cartridges bigger. I don't know. Like I said, I don't have a GameCom, so I can't play these games to tell you if they're any good. Uh, pick this one up. This is one of the ones I got at the uh, Half Price Books that day. And it's Fighters Mega Mix. This is a Sega Saturn game. It's like all the major fighting franchises that Sega made, like, uh, was it Last Bronx, Virtua Fighter, and uh, there was one other one too. Fighting Vipers, it's like it's like uh, Super Smash Brothers for the Saturn. All those different fighting franchises all in one game. And you only have, what, 12 characters you can pick as in this? And it's like a, a side-scrolling... It's like uh, Street Fighter instead of being 3D. So it's like a 2D fighting game. And you only have 12 characters to pick as. But it says here... It's Virtua Fighter 2 versus Fighting Vipers. Two arcade smash hits smashing into each other in the ultimate battle for supremacy. It's cutting edge combat. Probably not. It's also filled with su surprises. Try to unlock your favorite characters from, get this, Daytona USA and Virtua Cop. Okay. Maybe next time. I appreciate it, though. Uh, another one I picked up on eBay, because why not? I think I got this for like five bucks. Uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park. Can't play it, but it looks like a side-scrolling run and gun. Can't be that good. This was why this game right here is why I bought these games to begin with, because one of my goals is to get all the console games for this series. Mortal Kombat Trilogy. I love Mortal Kombat, so when I saw this on the shelf, I was like, shit, I guess I gotta start buying these, too. But, this is the most gimped Mortal Kombat you'll ever play in your life. Because, what was the point of Mortal Kombat Trilogy? Why, why did it exist? Because it had every character from every Mortal Kombat game available to that point playable in this game. Uh, so that's Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, right? So, 
why would you port this to this console when the only characters you could fit in here are how many? Five, nine, 13 characters. 13. So you can play as, well, from what I can tell, Scorpion. No, that's Reptile, Katana, Nightwolf, Melina, Raiden, Jade. There's two characters you can unlock. Sub-Zero. That's, I think, Sector, Shao Kahn, Motaro, and uh, Cyrax. And there's two characters you can unlock. It doesn't tell you who they are, but it's probably another Sub-Zero. I don't understand why this is a thing. I don't know. Uh, but it looks okay, but like I said, it's just in plain old black and white. And it looks like there's fatalities because you see Reptile doing his. But it can't be good. I can't imagine that being good. I understand that the D-pad on the GameCom was, like, horrible and the buttons are bad. But look at this. We got Resident Evil 2. What the hell? And it's not like the Resident Evil 2 that you remember. This one is actually, like, just a 2D Resident Evil game. Nah. I'm not banning no one, dude. <laughs> oh, when I banned T Belly by accident because I didn't know who I didn't know who he was at that point in time. I have never heard of him. I was like the like the second time I've ever been in one of Captain Algebra streams. He randomly made me a uh, a mod because I wanted to share the link to a video that he said he liked of mine so other people could see it. And then like that night, the trolls attacked, and T Belly just happened to say something that was very similar to what the trolls were saying. So I banned him, and everyone was like, no, don't do it, it's T-Belly. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. And the last game I have for the Gamecom is Williams Arcade Classics. Um, it's a compilation game of like all our old arcade games. So you got Joust, Defender, Robotron, Defender 2, also known as Stargate, and Sinistar. I can't imagine this is good either. <laughs> so I will eventually probably get a Gamecom at some point. There's a second model that I found out about that is actually backlit, so I might try to get that one, but I understand that one's more expensive. Uh, but the batteries on that thing also don't last very long either. So I would like to play the games, but I'm not expecting them to be, like, good. How is Cap, by the way? I, I was uh, He was streaming on Tuesday, so he's doing pretty good. Uh, I haven't seen him since the summer when I met up with him and Shondo. Uh, but, yeah, we're talking about hanging out at the uh, Midwest Gaming Classic again in 2020 and all that, so things are good. So that's it for the games in this video. So talk about the PC Engine, PC Engine CD, Turbo Graphics, Turbo CD, Atari Lynx, and the Tiger Gamecom. <laughs> um, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, so I'm finishing up working on the Movies That Would Make Great Video Games collaboration, Part 4. Um, like I said, had to remove somebody from the video and had to find a replacement last minute. So that was another, like, this thing's been delayed shit. I just realized that I had started getting uh, submissions for people to be in the video in January of this year. So this game is like 10 months, or this video is like 10 months in the making. <laughs> it took that long to get it going because everyone was coming and going and just, uh, it was a pain in the ass. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm about halfway through it right now. It should be out maybe by the weekend, maybe midweek next week, if anything, if uh, at the latest. I'm going to be working on it all weekend. Uh, also have the next stream video will be next Thursday, also at 7 p.m. Central. And I will be talking about the 3DO, the Sega Saturn, and the Nintendo 64. All in one video. It might be a little bit long, but we'll see. So 7 p.m. Central next week, Thursday. Hope to see you there. Uh, don't forget, movies that would make great video games, part four, probably this weekend or midweek next week. So thanks everybody for coming. I'm glad to have seen all of you. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Chris, the old ass retro gamer signing off y'all. Have a good night.